106 dead and counting, over 2,200 structures destroyed, at least 222 families displaced, over $5 billion in damage. But don't worry, a church is fine, so God's doing his part. I'm talking, of course, about the wildfires that swept through Hawaii last week and are to a much lesser extent still smoldering as of this recording, I think. And of course, in no instance is God's absence more glaring than in natural disasters, right? Except except maybe unnatural disasters. But somehow, believers all across the country are simultaneously able to sympathize with the doomed victims that suddenly found themselves engulfed in a firestorm and to believe that a loving deity is still running the show. And in a spectacular display of the sheer magnitude of their cognitive dissonance, the fact that one of the many buildings that didn't burn down was a church is being offered up as evidence of divine providence. Headlines like Newsweek's Maui Church Miraculously Unscathed, News Nation's Incredible Miracle, Maui Church Unscathed by Fire, and the New York Post's It's a Miracle, Catholic Church Untouched by Maui Wildfires, all attest to God's minimal but somehow still miraculous intervention. And I should emphasize here that there weren't like, you know, hundreds of refugees huddled in this church praying for deliverance as the fire bared down on them. The fucking thing was empty. Homes burned down all around it, some with families in them. And these headlines would have you believe that God just nodded along uh, through all of that until the fire started fucking with his property. And some fucking how they're selling it like he's the good guy in the story, if that were the case. Of course, this is always the case with religious people in the wake of a disaster, right? House catches fire, kills everybody inside, and then we get a feel-good story about the way that the Bible was miraculously unburned. A natural disaster kills a dozen people, and Christians praise Jesus for all the nearby murders he didn't commit. Thousands of people die in a terrorist attack that collapses a skyscraper, and we lionize God's grand effort at offering up a sympathetic lowercase t in the wreckage. I mean, imagine if we were all evaluated with as much leniency in our jobs as Christians give God, right? It'd be like the only standard you guys would hold me to on this podcast was, well, that episode wasn't technically a hate crime. He nailed it. But somehow God, who by their reckoning has the highest possible potential for achievement, is graded by the lowest possible standard. Sure, he was asleep at the wheel when the wildfire came through. And sure, he invented wildfire and it was his idea to make humans flammable to begin with. But damn it, an elderly woman was able to find her old wedding band among the wreckage that used to be her home. So God is good. Five of five would pray to again. In fact, if you think about it, God's such an underachiever that they never even bothered to conceptualize true miracles. Right. Instead, they had these inherently selfish moments of random wish granting. Like even if it wasn't just how coincidences work, it would still suggest a pretty shitty God. Because when he does miracle, it's pretty much always for just one person or one group of people limited in scope and geography. And by definition, it's never universal. It can't be. You know, God brings this person back to life, this one person in a hospital full of dying people. God solves one person's financial problems in a neighborhood full of poverty. God finds one person's lost keys without finding another person's lost child. Now, contrast this with science, right? I I mean, it would be too much to say that we can all benefit equally from the advancements of science, but there aren't even any scientists researching for a cure to just Dave's cancer, right? To the greatest possible extent, science's miracles are distributed to the world. Yes, we fall way short of that, right? But it is at least the ideal. In fact, one of the metrics that we use to judge a scientific breakthrough's usefulness is how universally applicable it is. How many people will be able to benefit from that? That's a basic question for science, but it's too much to ask a God. Even in their own telling, he's never actually eradicated a disease, right? And for an omnipotent God, that would be damning enough, even if he wasn't the dude that invented those diseases in the first place. Of course, if we actually believed even the very worst of Christians, we'd have to accept that sometimes God does do repeat and widespread healing miracles by granting healing powers to the greasiest of his disciples. But again, because of the criminally low standard that religious people hold their God to, the people who believe that shit don't even bother to question why the person with the healing powers is in a megachurch instead of a fucking emergency room. Their very concept of miracles is so self-centered that it doesn't even occur to them to ask. Now, to be clear, God simply isn't, right? That's the real answer. He doesn't do miracles and the claims for his miracles are as limited as they are because religious people are stuck with shit that would have just happened by chance. But even if they were right, 
The best efforts of humankind would be more omnibenevolent than the best efforts of their omnibenevolent God, which is yet another reminder of how grievously they insult that God by believing he exists.